Miles Morales is surrounded by weak supporting characters and a cast that feels as expansive as five randos who come to represent the entirety of Harlem. The only real standout was Rio Morales, who has by far the best emotional moment in the game and serves as the most competent figure in Miles' life, which is a low bar. The game's real problem, though, is its villains. The Prowler is about as cliche a representation of Uncle Aaron as possible, although his boss fight is a standout. He's pretty much just Miles' black cat, if you took away the sex appeal and made her Spider-Man's middle-aged uncle instead. Simon Krieger is barely a character. This Topher Grace looking ass started off with promise and quickly became a millennial caricature of your standard evil CEO. Norman Osborn stripped of anything menacing or interesting. But the villain taking home the trophy for biggest disappointment is Finn Mason. What a disaster. I wanted to like Finn, she has a classic Spider-Man villain origin, and her connection to Miles had the potential for great emotional storytelling. She set up as his foil, where he lost his father tragically and had a support system in his life that helped him turn his grief into a force for good. Finn lost her brother and was left alone, converting her grief to fuel for her evil schemes. That's the problem, though. This game wants to have its cake and eat it, too. They are so desperate for the player to sympathize with Finn that it's nauseating, yet, as the main villain, the story also forces her to, you know, be a horrible psycho hellbent on death and destruction. It just doesn't work, but it could have. So, in this video, I want to break down why Finn Mason's failure as a villain is the worst part of Miles Morales' story, and then I want to talk about the simple fix that could have solved everything. There are three major problems with Finn. Her relationship with Miles, her plan to take on Roxxon, and her tinkerer persona. We're introduced to Finn early on as Miles' long-lost childhood friend from Brooklyn, and their relationship starts off kind of flirty. The timeline of when Miles last saw Finn is extremely vague, and only exacerbated when it's revealed that her older brother, Rick, has been dead for either months or years, depending on if you trust dialogue exposition or his in-game grave. Her personality is just that she's better than Miles in every way, and god is she smug about it. Also, she's some kind of out-of-this-world child genius, even more so than the typical young Spider-Man characters, like social media guru to the stars, Genki. I'll be getting into her technological feats a bit later, because there's a glaring plot problem, but that's Finn an unlikable jerk who keeps the death of a loved one hidden from those who care about him for no reason. Throughout the game, Finn continues to act increasingly horribly to Miles. Perhaps the most horrendous and unforgivable act comes really early on. Finn sends the underground to attack Roxxon Plaza, while Miles' mom is holding a political rally against Roxxon, resulting in a gunfight in front of innocent citizens, and Miles' mom being injured enough to go to the hospital. For no reason, too. The Underground's real target is a truck caravan on the other side of town, so Finn had to explicitly decide to also send a contingent of her gang to assault this rally, knowing people she claims to care about would be exposed to danger. That's it. Full stop. She's a horrible, horrible friend. She later apologizes to Miles and blames things going wrong on Spider-Man. Is she fucking Jameson? How is this at all forgivable, and why is it brushed under the rug as though it's not a big deal? Well, dear viewer, that's because this game bends over backwards to frame Finn as a sympathetic and misguided antagonist not the outright villain she clearly is. That's constantly made clear through the interpersonal interactions Finn and Miles have throughout the game, where for some reason, he's always painted as being in the wrong. Oh, sorry my gang almost killed your mom. If only Spider-Man hadn't stopped them. No worries, you're the best, Finn. Would you like to spit in my coffee too? Now the reason this characterization is a problem isn't because I personally don't like Finn. The entire plot hinges on Miles and Finn's relationship, and if that relationship is flimsier than wet paper, the emotional throughline of the story crumbles. The internal conflict that Miles faces is defined by his conflicted feelings over Finn. He understands her pain, but his responsibility as Spider-Man puts them at odds. They made it easy to side with Finn, pitting her against a nasty corporate giant with a douchebag CEO. Everything was stacked in her favor, 
And yet, I hated her by the end. And the reason for that is simple. She treats Miles like shit. Putting aside the assault she organized on his mom, and the constant bashing of his intelligence every chance she gets, the real meat of her horrendous behavior toward Miles comes when he reveals himself as Spider-Man. Now, Miles did lie to Finn about wanting to join the underground, and I get that would sting. Definitely not a nice thing to do, but from this reveal until the very end of the game, all Finn talks about is how big of a liar Miles is. It's the crux of their final fight. Finn just can't bring herself to believe anything Miles tells her because he lied to sneak into her domestic terrorist cell. The hypocrisy on display is off the charts, and the game never really cares to explore that side of things. I mean, she even kept Rick's death a secret from Miles for years. Miles just takes this abuse cutscene after cutscene, and it's brutal. I mean, Finn literally threatens to kill him because the rhino decided to toss her a taunt after he got beat up. She's not a good friend, and it's incredibly hard to care about a supposedly sympathetic villain when you never see her genuinely looking out for the person she purports to care about, and when her villainous plan is so downright nonsensical. When Finn enters the game, it's right after Miles first runs into the underground at Roxxon Plaza. In this early scene, it's established that Rio Morales is also a sworn opponent of Roxxon, largely positioning her political campaign against them. With this deeply personal connection, why doesn't Finn ever try and support a public case against Roxxon? Well, because her plan doesn't make any sense. Finn's big scheme is to finish what Rick started and halt production of New Form a dangerous fuel source developed by Roxxon. It was created by Rick and was responsible for his illness and the death of those who were exposed to it. To stop this, Rick brought his teenage sister into a heavily guarded corporate headquarters to destroy a dangerous fuel source up close and personal, but got killed instead. Flash forward however much time later, and Finn is still committed to destroying New Form, and now Roxxon Plaza 2, for some reason. The plan is afoot. Her new gang, called the Underground, starts messing with subway lines to keep New Form from getting into the city. They organize an attack on a political rally opposing Roxxon for no reason, which really makes no sense since the Underground's real scheme, at the same time, was to rob a truck transporting New Form on a bridge where Finn is revealed as the Tinkerer. She smashes Miles into the truck and his new bioelectricity powers destabilize the New Form, which destroys the bridge. Not to worry. Somehow the new form Finn grabbed, and the first one affected by the bioelectricity, wasn't affected at all! And she managed to escape with it, which she plans to use to blow up Roxxon Plaza, to I guess, expose the dangers of new form? But that's not the danger. Oh, right, sorry plan doesn't make any sense. From here, Finn just kind of hits pause until the final act. She's just sitting on her ass and waiting for the new form to destabilize until the plot is ready for her to enact her scheme. Keep in mind, there's about three hours of story between the bridge and the finale, which is about half of this game's runtime. Then, uh-oh, she starts a gang war in Harlem, and the plan that Miles was trying to warn her about goes wrong. The final boss fight of the game happens just because she refuses to listen to reason. Even Simon Krieger chimes in over the intercom and taunts Finn about how not worried he is about her plan, because why would he be? How would a terrorist attack destroying Roxxon Plaza make Roxxon look bad? This is a corporation. Blowing up a building won't solve any problems. They couldn't even produce more new form by this point. We see Krieger getting pissed about that. Which means, early on in the game, after the bridge, the conflict ceases to be about stopping new form, and for several hours, we're just watching Miles try and convince Finn over and over again not to destroy a massive tower in the middle of Harlem with an experimental fuel bomb. Welp, I guess at the end of the day, all went according to the very dumb plan of the supervillain known as... Finn Mason is a gender and race swapped version of Phineas Mason, the tinkerer from the comics. I have no problem with a new take on the tinkerer. He's a C-list villain at best, and one of my favorite things about superhero games is the unique worlds they can craft, bending the original source material 
to fit the story they want to tell. As I mentioned before, Spider-Man stories in particular are no stranger to genius teen characters, so even though Finn is well beyond the believable in even that context, this is a video game, and Miles needed some new enemy types to fight to keep his spin-off from feeling just like a reskin of Spider-Man 2018. The problem isn't that Finn is the Tinkerer. The problem is how she uses that moniker, the gang she surrounds herself with, and the criminal operations she enacts while the game begs us to sympathize. Two really minor complaints that I need to get off my chest before moving on. First of all, why the hell did the underground graffiti this mural to the Tinkerer during the middle of their subway crime like she's their god? Secondly, I think her design looks really bad. In a game filled with mediocre villain designs, looking at you, Prowler, the Tinkerer's dead space helmet, purple hoodie, and studded leather jacket stand out by how little they stand out. She could blend into a crowd of her own goons, and while I appreciate the team's spirit, it does nothing to elevate her above the most common opponent in the campaign. Speaking of, let's talk about the underground. They are both the biggest plot contrivance of the game, and the biggest victims of the Tinkerer. We're told that Finn and the Underground linked up when they discovered a teenage girl creating insano mode weapons in her garage and decided to make her their leader. Finn tells Miles she needed them because she couldn't achieve her goals alone and they were willing to help for notoriety. They wanted to be able to get away with anything. So essentially, she's provided next level tech to faceless criminals who are in this for the wrong reasons to do more crime. What a misunderstood victim! However, an interesting aspect of the underground I didn't catch on my first playthrough is that they're all getting sick from new form exposure. And Finn doesn't seem to even care. We're told that everyone involved in the original new form project got sick. Somehow, even the account managers and marketing guy. It's clearly happening to the underground in the present, who are directly handling new form under Finn's orders. You can hear them complaining about their illnesses. One of them confronts Finn about the dangers in a meeting. It felt like this was gonna go somewhere, but it never does. Instead, the indirect implication is that Finn is acting just like Simon Krieger. She knows the risks of New Form and is openly exposing other people to it without precautions for her own goals. It's unclear she even told them the risks before their mission started. This is the illness that was killing her brother. The illness that took the lives of Rick's co-workers and started his crusade to stop Roxxon. It was such a weird choice for this game to include this illness with the underground and yet have no consequences for it. The Tinkerer faces no real descent from her ranks. The illnesses of the underground go completely unaddressed once Finn's story ends. It's just this completely messed up thing to happen to faceless nobodies and goes to show the unwillingness of this game to pin anything truly awful on Finn's shoulders. She was outright killing these people, and while the game will hint at it, it won't confront her on it, and it won't even condemn her for it. Speaking of Rick, he feels so shoehorned into the game by flashbacks. Like I get he's supposed to be a cool older brother, but I don't care. He seems pretty lame, and it would have been better if I didn't see him in flashbacks because they sucked. It tells you something when the best part was seeing Peter and Doc Ock together at the Science Center. They had a great dynamic, and there was a sorrowful and warm irony in that small moment. The fallout between Peter and Otto is what the relationship with Miles and Finn was trying to emulate, but I felt nothing for her in this flashback. They don't share a big emotional moment, they just get up to cartoon hijinks, Finn guilt trips Miles for going to a new school, and they take a lame picture with Rick. The reason this is so egregious is because in the present, Finn has decided to execute her evil scheme in this supposedly sentimental location to spite Miles. Even Genki, who barely knows Finn, is like, oh my god dude, I think she's really telling you to fuck yourself. And that's just it. Finn is a truly bad guy as the Tinkerer. If the story had played up how brutal she was, how intelligent she was, how unhinged and dangerous she was, then she could have been a really interesting villain. Because she is a bad dude. When Miles first chased after her, the way Finn got around the city was destructive. Wrecking bricks and windows, then leapfrogging onto cars and blowing them up. That's a person that needs to be stopped immediately. And while most of the cars she blows up are parked, 
I spotted several that were active. Finn straight up murders innocent people in that sequence. Big time yikes. She likes to do the murder. Even when they're fighting Rhino, she wants Miles to kill him. What does that have to do with exposing Roxxon? Yeah! Kill that dirtbag horn-nosed fuck, Miles! Make him suffer! This woman is... My point is, we didn't need to be told Finn was a character worthy of our sympathy constantly. She was a bad guy doing bad shit, and that was all good. It was the over-insistence on the opposite that threw things out of whack. We could have reveled in the villainy a bit and come to our own conclusions about her character. And if the same elements remained but weren't beaten into our skulls, people would have developed a light sympathy to make her final moments the least bit satisfying. At the end of the day, the Tinkerer persona just shouldn't have even existed at all. Why does Finn have a supervillain name and shtick? Simon Krieger already knows who she is. Why doesn't Krieger just tell the police? There's no strategic advantage in Finn being the Tinkerer. Even when Krieger knows for a fact who she is, he won't tell the police for whatever reason, so she is good. And Finn doesn't need a gang. She could have just built bombs. This girl is a true genius, wasting her talents making daft punk armor for street punks. She definitely didn't need to use new form to blow up Roxxon Plaza. Hell, just getting around causes her to blow shit up. Why did the bombing need to revolve around new form? I get that it's poetic justice or whatever, but she never even brings that up. Completely unaddressed. She has all this tech, the plaza has been around for a while, why couldn't she have just bombed it from the start before anyone else even got involved? Anyway, Finn flies Miles to the sky and blows up. Oh, so sad. What a hero. Yeah. Finn's big turn was so unearned. Miles literally has to beat her into the dirt for Finn to even come around to reality, and she didn't even hear him out. She just saw it for herself. She was so hard-headed, Miles was never able to get through to her. Anyway, Miles absorbs new form into him, and Finn sees the overlap between Miles' action and Rick's action. The game literally shows this. And so she decides to save Miles and all of Harlem from exploding. I get the visual similarity, but the motivations are very different. Miles is near the new form to absorb it and sacrifice himself, Rick was trapped by his own bad plan while begging Finn to look away. She tells him to let go and sacrifices herself. So weak. The quickest redemption, if you even want to call it that, to sacrifice I've ever seen. Finn is the worst part of Miles Morales' story. Her relationship with Miles was a detriment to her character. She's a plot contrivance slash whole machine, and her supervillain identity was ultimately superfluous. But I think a simple solution already exists within the game that could fix it. Finn definitely should have been part of the story. She had so much potential, but Rick should have been the villain. Not only would Rick serve as a better overarching villain, but his inclusion in the present day story would have made all of Finn's actions I just spent an unbelievable amount of time bitching about entirely forgivable. Keep Finn as the tinkerer, but Rick is the true mastermind. Everything she was doing was due to Rick's influence and eventual coercion, convincing Finn through their corrupted relationship that she was doing right by her family. Let me back up a little bit because this might seem out of left field. After all, everything we're told about Rick is that he's a great guy. That's perfect. Rick should have been a great older brother figure for Miles growing up only his death should be changed. Finn should still act weird when asked about Rick, not because he's dead and she's keeping that a secret, but because he's not the Rick Miles knew. Finn still loves him, but trying to explain the situation to anyone is too complicated and hard. Rather than being killed by the new form exposure, Rick should be transformed. That's the big reveal after the player is led to believe that Rick died from the video Miles watched. Everything with Finn up to the confrontation at the theater should remain the same. But rather than Miles being interrupted by the Tinkerer, it's Rick who jumps down and snags the new four. Miles is stunned, thankful to see Rick is alive, but concerned by the situation. 
As he chases a new form power direct across the city, he sees the destruction he is causing and quickly realizes this is no longer the man he admired. When Rick gets the best of Miles, Miles reveals his identity to him in a last ditch effort to get Rick to stop. And Rick does spare Miles, revealing a hint of humanity that still remains, but he tells him how disappointed Finn will be before leaving him behind. This is a big rewrite, but I think it would have greatly benefited all characters involved and the overall plot. But before getting into the specifics, let's discuss the elephant in the room, New Form Rick. Picture Rick tinted New Form Blue with energy blast powers. Not the most inventive power set, but hey, I'm working with what we've got. Maybe he emits a low-level radiation and needs to be in some kind of containment suit at all times so the people around him don't get ill. I think a science accident energy man would fit well enough into Spider-Man's rogues gallery and could fight like a mix between Mr. Negative and Electro. The reason that Rick would become this villainous mastermind is also easier to swallow. He was transformed and given newfound powers, but at a cost. Rick and Finn's crusade against Roxxon would continue after the accident, still paved with good intentions, but now darkened by Rick's personal desire for revenge on Krieger and the knowledge that he's on borrowed time. After running tests on himself, he realizes he'll eventually need more new form to survive, but keeps that a secret. His turn to villainy didn't happen immediately. Only after he was seduced by his new abilities and came to fear his demise did he tip over to the dark side. This is something Finn is blind to, but Miles sees clearly. So let's talk about Finn, because I don't want anyone to get the impression that I'm just replacing her and she goes away. No, the Tinkerer should be a red herring for the player. The early reveal of the leader of the underground was a sleight of hand trick to hide the real mastermind, even though hints existed at Rick's influence the entire time. This rewrite would strip the truly horrendous actions that Finn takes throughout the game and transfer them to Rick. His presence would also explain some of the more boneheaded decisions she makes as being made out of love for her brother. She's been manipulated by Rick, dragged along on his quest for power, and hidden behind his confidence that he can keep her safe. This would also open up the avenue for Finn to be a love interest for Miles. The game set up flirty vibes with them early on, and then completely dropped them, which was a mistake. If Finn had a thing for Miles, but was torn out of loyalty to her brother, that would have made their relationship much more dynamic. Imagine Finn trying to bring Miles over to her side because she had a thing for him. Miles is so desperate to protect her because he feels the same way. When Miles manipulates her emotions by pretending to want to join the underground, that would have had such a greater impact on Finn, who not only realizes Miles lied to her, but that he also played with her heart. Their romantic feelings come to a head when they are captured by Roxxon and need to fight their way out. Miles and Finn open up to each other, but their conflicted loyalties get in the way. If you want a sympathetic antagonist as much as Insomniac clearly did, I think this is the best way to go. Finn means well, but her love for her brother keeps her on the wrong path until her redemption. The final act of the game should play out the same. Rick leads the underground to attack Roxxon Plaza, but not for the reasons that Finn thinks. Actually, before getting there, I want to talk about Rick's recontextualization of the underground. Him serving as the true leader makes way more sense, because just like how Finn was based on a real comic character, so was Rick. Rick Mason in the comics is the Tinkerer's son and a super spy known as The Agent. Rick is about 10 years older than Miles and Finn in this game. He could have had an entire covert life working for S.H.I.E.L.D. while they were young, before retiring from that lifestyle and joining up with Roxxon. Rick's time as a secret agent would justify his formation of the Underground. It makes sense that the Agent would gather a small army to enact military-style terrorist attacks, especially if the Underground weren't just a bunch of random street goons, but instead, a mix of Rick's old associates and people he has dirt on. That's why they agree to be part of a mission that's exposing them all to illness. They don't have a choice, solidifying Rick's sinister turn. Anyway, so Rick's attack on Roxxon Plaza causes the endangerment of Harlem, and it's his ultimate betrayal of Finn. Rick's real goal was not to destroy New Form, but to gather the existing supply for himself and to create more. Finn never knew that. 
This also justifies the continued importance of New Form in the game's plot, and why the Underground would continue to handle such volatile chemicals rather than just building bombs. Finn believes the plan is to destroy the plaza, but Miles learns the truth. Rick plans to create as much New Form as possible, but his first step is to expose himself to the active reactor to extend his life and grant himself greater power. But both versions of the plan are pointless. Krieger's tinkering with the reactor would still happen, meaning the same threat is posed to Harlem. When Finn realizes this, she immediately tries to stop it, but Rick grows angry and tries to stop her. Miles steps between them. The final boss fight is Rick versus Miles, while Finn actively tries to stop the reactor from exploding. Miles wins by knocking Rick out and joins Finn down below. The same finale scene should play out, with Miles going to absorb all the energy into himself. While this is happening, Rick comes to in a moment of clarity. Watching the people he cares about desperately trying to deactivate a bomb that he armed, seeing the danger he's put innocent people in, causes him to take immediate action. He sacrifices himself instead of Finn, repenting his actions and dying in the explosion. I think that this would be a great ending since it keeps the tragedy, but would leave Finn around as a love interest for Miles and as a new vigilante in Brooklyn trying to make up for her actions. So yeah, I think that's a version of events that I would have preferred to see. Rick's presence towers over this game, and I think including him as a surprise villain would have been the perfect thematic development to challenge Miles, while also saving Finn's character from permanent damage and allowing her to flourish into the future of the franchise. Giving Miles a superhero genius girlfriend with a tragic past would really distinguish him from any of Peter's love interests. But what do you think? Do you like Finn the way she is? Would you have liked to see her handled another way? Please let me know that and any of your thoughts in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and take care.